If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Hello everyone, we are back with George and as you know, you, you probably saw the first episode where we talked about his upcoming podcast, but now it is not at upcoming, it is already live and I think, George, how many episodes have you had already for your podcast? Well, we, we dropped the third episode last Thursday. That episode was hooked on books. I try to encourage listeners to get into reading because I feel that's one of the most neglected things that is happening now, especially with the youth. That nobody seems to care about reading anymore. Mm, right. And I, I guess it's part of the, the culture where you know everything is streaming, everything is on Netflix, and people get bored reading books. What, what, what are your thoughts about that, George? Like, what has technology done to the kids of today? You have ebooks. Amazon has a lot of ebooks, mm-hmm. uh, even mm-hmm. Apple and uh, whatever. It's just a matter of really getting your heart into reading. My dad was a wide reader. In, uh, during the advent of ebooks, my brothers decided to get him an iPad. Initially, he said, What am I going to do with that? And then he realized that it was going to be much easier for him to get books through uh, the internet. So he got hooked on it. Instead of buying books from the regular bookstore, all he had to do was download the books and read it from his iPad. So uh, it's no different from the kids nowadays. They can actually uh, read books, or not even books. Just go to Google. There's tons of materials that are available so that they could read. It's very important, really, because nothing really beats visual. When you see it, it really sticks to your head. This morning, we we had a live stream. Uh, We were talking about that. What were the publications before? I enumerated the daily newspapers. We had something like six or seven daily newspapers for the morning alone. I remember we used to sell a lot of those newspapers every day. In fact, during Sundays, we normally ordered around 200 pieces of Manila Times alone. And they were sold out before 10 in the morning. That's how literate people were that time. And somehow, it's not happening anymore. And I guess that's also the reason why people get a lot of misinformation because it's so easy to do that in the internet nowadays. So it's much better if you get legitimate reading materials for you to really get the true picture. That is my advocacy when it comes to you know dealing with my students and encouraging them to read. And the number one book, Word Power Made Easy. I always highly recommend that book. You get to increase your vocabulary just by reading through the whole book. And the nice thing about it, it doesn't read like a textbook. It reads more like a storybook. So it gets to be very interesting. We never realized that we could somehow benefit from that book until several years later when the words that I learned from Word Power Made Easy kept on cropping up. And those were the things I was using for negotiations, for meetings and stuff. And that's when I realized the value of uh, Word Power Made Easy. So I I still recommend that book. Uh, I thought it was out of print already, so I told my students before, maybe you had to go to Recto to look for it. And uh, I discovered it's on the internet, it's available on eBay, on Amazon, and as a matter of fact, it's even available at National Bookstore. So aside from that book, George, what do you think are the books that the younger generation should be reading? Anything that's readable and somehow breaks your interest, read it. You can buy any book and you get to learn, uh, you know, something out of it. In fact, it's not only books. It could be magazines. So isn't it ironic, George, like in spite of the fact that, you know, you can read from virtually any electronic source at a time when everything is available on the Internet, People are not reading. So, you know, if it's easy to get something, you take it for granted, right? Mm. If it's hard to get, you go out of your way to grab hold of it. But if it's so easy, you just take everything for granted. A lot of my students are very young. They got themselves into reading simply because uh, I told them, you know, it's not just an educational thing. You have to learn, not because you want to have good grades, but because you want to have a good life. Once you have a lot of information in your head, somehow you're able to relate something from yesterday to what you have today. And that for me is a lot of fun because that's knowledge. A lot of people say knowledge is power and I believe in that. This morning again, our topic for Boomer's Banquet was brand dead. Instead of branded, brand dead. Brands before which are not seen anymore. And uh, we had as our guests, one of them is a collector of old items from the past. He's now 
what they call the Filipino picker. Mm. Mm, he, he recently got interviewed by the History Channel, CNN, and Jessica Soho. And we were fortunate to be able to guest him in our live stream this morning. And he had a lot of things. He just buys everything that uh, he can get his hands on. But he never realized the stories behind the things that he bought. He was able to sell a beer bottle for mm. 50,000 pesos mm. to the owners of that bottle before. <laughs> what beer was this? Is this Halili beer? Halili beer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds like a porn star, Halili. <laughs> 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 we talked about it. He didn't know the history, but uh, apparently the family contacted him when, we, when he was interviewed by Jessica. Uh, Jessica also interviewed the Halili family, and uh, they discovered that they didn't have a single bottle of that old product of theirs. Uh, Halili beer died and was sold to San Miguel because they ran out of bottles. Uh, and Halili didn't have a bottling plant here, so eventually they didn't have anything to work with. So the Halili family didn't have any bottle at all. And they learned that this guy, our guest, had six bottles, I think. You know what? He was able to sell it for 50. What I'm getting from you, George, is that, you know, if people had information, it could be useful in a very practical sense. Like, it could actually help them to sell stuff. Oh, yes. You know what happened? Two days after, a lot of people called from the provinces. I have bottles of Halili beer here. I even have a case, the box of Halili beer. All of a sudden, in so short a time, the price dropped down to something like 15000 Oh, yeah, love supply and demand. But again, the information was spread. And for me, again, information is gold. Mm, mm, right, right. So uh, what about the episode on attitude, George? Are you done with that or is that premiering this week? Uh, uh, attitude premiered two weeks ago. It's still on Spotify. Well, attitude, it's simply saying, look forward to your day. That's very mm. important. As soon as you wake up in the morning, you have to have the right attitude. Otherwise, your whole day will be ruined every morning. I usually wake up around 3.30 or 4. First thing I do, really, is say thank you and smile. Mm. Then I pray, and then I exercise. I remember some people telling me before, exercise somehow increases your happy hormones or your stuff. Mm. Mm. And... It really helps a lot. And after that, you know, you can take on the day, even if there are some disappointments or chinks along the way, it doesn't really affect you that much anymore. Because you, you started your day on the right track. Attitude somehow determines your whole life. Mm. It mm. determines your day. If you have a bad attitude, that's it. It's, it's going to ruin not only your day, but the day of other people. But if you have a really good attitude, it somehow comes out differently for the next episode of Masterclass. I'm going to be talking about the importance of a smile mm. because they go hand in hand, right? Attitude and put a smile on your face. And once you do that, your day becomes much, much easier. Right. So what I'm getting, George, is that you begin your day with a positive attitude and you smile because it somehow sets the tone. And the Actually, what you said reminds me of this quotation. Your attitude determines your altitude. I have no idea who said that. Yeah, but I'm... very nice, right? That's a very nice quotation. And people should, you know, adhere to that. I always share that in all my classes, no matter what type of training I have, I always share it with them. I try to somehow segregate my true self from my persona in my job. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the only way to do that is for you to have the right attitude towards your job. I could be George Boone, and then I, I'm George Mercado. Mm -hmm. See? George Mercado stays behind when I become George Boone. Okay, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> somehow it's, it's like that, see? Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between George Boone and George Mercado? I don't know if you're going to agree with me. I think, I think I'm still what you might call an introvert. Mm -hmm. In spite of the fact that a lot of people think I'm the most gregarious person on earth. You know, I'm not really into getting to meet a lot of people. My minimum requirement, so to speak, is I have to be interested in another person because uh, that way my sincerity shows. If I'm not interested, I'm not going to be sincere. So what's the point of meeting another person? Mm. That's, that works for me. I don't know about others. George Boone, on the other hand, is a totally different animal. He's a friend of everyone. I call him a foe, an F-O-E, a friend mm. 
happened oh, everywhere. Mm. George, one, one thing that I thought of after I listened to the last thing that you said is that you might have some great tips for introverts. Yep. So how, how can they start doing that? Some of my students uh, claim they're introverts, and that's the reason why they had to enroll in John Robert Powers. A common denominator really is they're basically cynical about people, about events, or whatever. I always tell my students who are like that because they talk to me, and some of them are, you know, really young. Like, we're talking grade 10, grade 11, and they seem to be in a shell. And uh, I always them look, always look at the good side of a person, always good, uh, look at the bright side of a person, and maybe it's going to change your outlook, and that outlook is your attitude towards other people. You'll find out it's contagious. When you have that kind of attitude, it could be so contagious that other people will have that same kind of attitude and open up too. And I, was, uh, I keep on telling them this story about there was one time I was walking along Ayala Avenue with a smile on my face, a stupid smile on my face, of course. Uh, and, you know, it's so funny. When you have that smile on your face, minding your own business, people who walk, who walk with you or maybe uh, who, who you come across to somehow give you a smile on their face too. They smile mm. back at you. And then uh, the kicker was uh, when, when I was approaching the pedestrian underpass. There was a guard there, and as soon as I approached, you know what he did? He smiled at me and said, good morning, sir. He never did mm. that to any other pedestrian. Mm. See? Mm. Now, can you imagine if you say good morning with a smile on your face to another person, even a, a, a person you don't know, only two things will happen. Either he'll think he, you're crazy, or he'll feel good about it. <laughs> he'll feel so good about it that he's going to do that to another person, mm. and that somehow promotes a chain reaction and if we could only do that more people are going to feel better in this world just because of a single smile this little times i even got really great service from a restaurant because of a smile uh so for example like you're let's say you're george mercado right now and then you know your show starts and it's time for you to become george boone like what do you do personally so that you can make the transition easily and quickly uh I get nervous. Believe it or not, ever since I started out on radio, until the last time I went on board, I always was nervous about 30 minutes before my show. That's why I show up in a radio station at least an hour before my show, just to somehow acclimatize myself every time I do my shows. And my last radio station, that's a classic example. My, my program was at 6. I would go there before 5. First thing I do is arrange my playlist already. Everything is set. Like, uh, even if I'm not there, press the button, and it's going to go on for two hours. Everything mm. is in order already. Because I prepared for that already, right? Again, that's part of a great attitude. You prepare for whatever you have to do. Now, after I fix everything, what do I do? I bring some newspapers with me to the canteen. I have coffee. Mm. And uh, I used to, I still smoked that time, so I had a couple of smokes. When I went down 30 minutes at around 5.30, somehow... I've psyched myself up already. That coffee alleviated my nervousness. So when I come down at 30 minutes before my show, I'm all set, I'm all pricked up, and by 6 o'clock, I'm ready to go. Some people go jogging. I know someone who jogs in place be before his show. So different strokes are different folks. So what I'm hearing from you, George, is that uh, getting nervous is actually helpful. And how you deal with that is you come in earlier so that you can prepare yeah oh uh, well you know i always tell this to my students but don't say you're nervous say you're excited in other words mm. try to parlay that adrenaline rush of yours uh, out of being nervous to something positive which is being excited all your energy will now be focused towards what you're going to be doing Another thing we have to remember, and uh, it's going to be a topic, you know, it's so funny. I'm, I'm, I'm like a commercial. I'm, I'm like an advertisement here. In a couple of weeks' time, episode number six would deal with comparing yourself with others. That's our problem. We try to keep on comparing ourselves with other people. And my peg uh, for, for that is the Desiderata by Max Ehrman. And one line there says, is that the one that says, do not compare yourself with others? Like yeah. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter. For always, there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. They're going to know my story 
during episode six because uh, I was a DJ. My friends were already bank managers and vice presidents and whatever. Initially, I felt bad about it because they were executives and here I was, a dumb DJ. But then I realized it's not it. It's more than that. Because mm. time came when whenever we had reunions, uh, we'd be talking about medical uh, procedures and uh, maintenance medicines and diet and stuff. And they asked me if I have any. And I said, I don't take maintenance meds. I have a regular diet. I eat steaks whenever I want to. I eat chicharron whenever I want to. I drink. I quit smoking some years back, but I still drink. And that's it. And I'm still healthy. And the nice thing about it is I haven't retired. They've all retired. They're also scared about getting out of the house because they might get sick or something. Here I am feeling good about everything. So they keep on, well, we recently had a reunion, our 50th anniversary of our graduation from high school. And they asked me the same question because they, you know, they were wondering how I could keep looking this way and I could uh, have this kind of attitude until now. And I tell them it's so simple. All you have to do is feel good about yourself and never compare yourself with others. I mean, you know, they, have, they might have the Mercedes Benzes of the world, the BMWs, but they have heart conditions. They have diabetes. I don't. Mm. And I'm thankful and I'm thankful for that. I'm really grateful for that. Because for me, that's a blessing. I guess that's a reward I get for having a good attitude. What I'm getting from you, George, is that having a good attitude is going to solve a lot of problems. And as a matter of fact, it has allowed you to eat what you want, drink what you want. And I guess enjoy life in general, huh? Yeah, just enjoy life in general. You know, a great attitude will never, ever solve all your problems. That's for sure. But one thing is certain. A great attitude will help you go through those concerns. As a matter of fact, I don't call them problems anymore. I call them concerns. I always tell my students, again, take problem out of your vocabulary. Replace it with concerns or issues. It's easier to somehow say, and it's easier to take, and at the same time, it doesn't really sound so negative. I'm not saying I don't have any concerns. I have a lot of concerns. But it's not going to ruin my day anymore. You know when that happened? It happened when you offered me that job in the call center. Because I thought my life was at a dead end already. Then all of a sudden, you came in and offered me an opportunity which I never realized would come to me. It totally changed my life. It really hit me right here. And uh, it taught me, hey, if you have a great attitude, it's going to happen. Nothing really is unsolvable, so to speak. That changed my life, definitely. It completely turned me around from being a pessimist to an optimist. Wow, that is amazing. George, for the future episodes of your podcasts, is this something that you make on the spot because of inspiration? Or is this something that has been plotted in advance? What happens here is, I know I have a weekly episode. Okay. One of the downfalls of podcasts, or live streams for that matter, is somehow you're going to get into a famine, okay. a creative famine, right? right. Yeah. And you don't even know what to talk about anymore. Mm. That is the danger. So what, what do I do? I remember last week. I did Smile about two weeks ago. Then after that, and I usually, I usually do two episodes already uh, just to have a buffer, right? So I did Smile. I couldn't somehow get my head into coming up with the next one, the sixth episode. At the same time, I ran out of ideas for my Boomer's Banquet. I didn't even know what to discuss for this morning's uh, show. But all of a sudden, out of a dream, came that desiderata thing. And suddenly, I don't know what happened at 3 o'clock in the morning. I was writing notes about what I was going to talk about. At the same time, an idea came to me on what to talk about during Boomer's Banquet. That was Brad Dead. So somehow, <laughs> it's going to come to you. Just be open to everything. After this discussion of ours, I probably, most likely, I'm going to be inspired again to, to uh, come up with my seventh episode already mm -hmm. because of, you know, what, what we're doing, what, what we're talking about. It comes, uh, you know, inspiration just uh, pops in 
Yeah, it's so funny. Sometimes you dream about it. The sad thing is, you dream about it, and you don't even think about it. When you wake up in the morning, that's it. You forget all about it. So uh, I try to make it a point to well, w once I dream about it, I wake up and write it down immediately. So I won't worry about it. I won't have to try to recall what I dreamt about. Mm, interesting. Very interesting. So. So, George, any any message that you want to to give to the people who are thinking of, I don't know, maybe starting their own podcast or starting their own YouTube blog, and how they can tap into that, you know, like field of inspiration. My daughter uh, always uh, tells me, George, Dad, you you gotta monetize your podcast or and your live stream because uh, you, you're putting in a lot of time and effort. Uh, somehow you got to make money out of that. But then again, I always look at it this way. I don't even know about the numbers. Of course, having some numbers or having good numbers is really a blessing. It's just like, you know, running a radio station. If you don't rate, you don't get commercials, right? You don't get any advertisements at all. Same thing with podcasts. But then again, what are you going to look for? Are you going to look for listeners who will come to you because you're catering to their whims or are you going to look for something which your listeners can learn from your listeners can have a takeaway so to speak at this point in my life i'd like to do that uh, like I, I keep on saying and i keep on praying about it just let me leave a really lasting legacy especially to the young people because they need it more than anyone else we're about to exit this world already so there are a lot of young pe people out there who might need some nuggets of inspiration, I just hope they gave it to them. Wow. I mean, that is so... That actually reminds me of what Gary Vaynerchuk has been saying. It's not about the numbers. It's about the message. It's about the service that you're going to give. That's why sincerity and attitude are very important. Once you have that, you get a positive reaction. It's going to be a chain reaction again. Word of mouth people. Hey, listen to George Boone. He, he's got something here. He makes sense uh, saying all these things. Before you know it, the numbers will come to you. But don't make that your be all. Why are you doing this in the first place? It's communication, plain and simple. You want to communicate something to your listeners. You have an idea you want to bring out to them? Fine. And then hopefully they would react to that the call to action that is very important they just don't listen to you they act on what you're going to be saying mm. right right okay so george before we end can i ask you again to read that part of the the poem desiderata and i was wondering are you going to read that whole thing in your podcast and using your dj voice <laughs> Uh, no, uh, I don't think so. But I, you know, I could read it now if um, if you'll allow I mean, me. I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you could even post that on YouTube as the the narration of Desiderata, like the official narration. Okay, this this is what we what we can do. Uh, if you invite me again, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Read the whole poem for you. But uh, here's part of it. This really hit me right here. Be cheerful strive to be happy wow wow uh, and i see that you also have a shirt that says boomer's banquet did you have that made for your blog no yeah. um, uh, a t-shirt maker just offered to make for us um, wow so, so he made it and then um he he even made face masks for us which we're <laughs> going to be giving away to our viewers amazing amazing <laughs> and we never even asked him about it well, you are attracting a lot of good things coming your way, I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, George, for, you know, for agreeing to do this interview. And like you said, maybe for the part three, you will read. Oh, no, no. I think that deserves its own YouTube entry altogether, like the official narration of Desiderata. Uh-huh. No, and after that, we can talk about what's in there because all those lines have, you know, somehow nuggets of wisdom so we can you know uh, what do you call this uh, when you do the frog in biology what do you do to the frog <laughs> i don't remember I... uh-huh in biology you cut it up right uh, right right uh, oh, oh you dissect it you dissect it all right yeah. so let's dissect desiderata uh, next time uh, we talk <laughs>
Okay, okay. So thank you very much, George, and I'll see you thank again you soon. Thank you too. All right. Thank you so much.